Hey, I'm Audrey DeSorbo. I'm the Career Development Coordinator here at Western Harnett High School, and I am coming to you today um, to talk with you about Major Clarity. So, I want to first show you how to get to that app. So, go to your Class Link account, which is where I'm my ads. I'm on my Class Link. I'm going to go down and I'm going to find the MC app, Major Clarity, and I am going to click on that. Major Clarity is a great tool. Actually, let me I'm going to change my role because I can see lots of students. Um, so Major Clarity is a great tool for career exploration, and that is one of the things that I am able to help you with, and so I want to kind of give you a brief overview of what to do in Major Clarity. Hopefully most of you have seen this um, website already uh, earlier in the year if you haven't been working on it now, but you can be working on this at any time, at school, at home, not when you're supposed to be doing your classwork though but um, I just mean in any extra time that you have. So one of the first things that I want to show you, if you have not already done this yet, I would like for you to start, if you if this is your first time clicking on Major Clarity, this will come up automatically. Um, I've actually been going over this with the um, freshmen, and so most of you who have been in my sessions have seen this, and so this is a follow-up to them and to everyone else. So the first page that you're going to get to when in Major Clarity is the Assessments tab. So there's a Personality Assessment. There are 48 questions in this. This li will literally take you less than five minutes to do. Um, so you start out with, it says, would you enjoy performing the following activities? So sell restaurant locations to individuals. If it's an X, that means no, I don't like that. Maybe obviously it's meh, maybe I will. Um, the heart is obviously that, hey, yeah, I'd love to do that. Okay, so sell restaurants. I'm going to do a few of these just as examples. Sell restaurant locations to individuals. I'm going to say no to that. Test the quality of parts before shipment. I'm going to say no to that one. Create the monthly payroll checks for an office. Okay, nah, not for me. Conduct a mus musical choir. I'm going to say maybe. Sell mer merchandise at a department store. I actually have done that before, so yeah, I could definitely like that. Study the structure of the human body. No, not for me. So you kind of get the gist. You're just going to go through. You can see I've already done six. Easy. Um, think about it. Just answer yes, no, or maybe. Okay. At the end, you are going to, you can always restart the assessment. If you have done the assessment before, if you've done it last year or previously, even this year, you can always redone, redo it again. Um, your interests change, actually, over time, so there's no problem. You can do it as many times as you want. And the best thing is you can get, get any of them wrong because they're all about you, <laughs> okay? After you finish this one, then I want you to come over to this learning styles assessment, which is only 25 questions. And basically it is, is the statement usually true for you? When I make things for my studies, I remember what I have learned better. So that's like making things out of hand, like doing projects and stuff. Actually, when I make things, yes. Um, okay, I learn better if someone reads a book to me than if I read it silently to myself. Uh, yes. Um, having assignment directions written on the board makes them easier to understand. So if I'm looking at it, it's easier for me to understand than just um, hearing about it. So yes. So you, same thing, go through and answer those questions. So after you answer those questions, you're going to get a rating on both of those. Okay, so let's say I'm going to go back to my home screen. Well, this is a portfolio, so you can see I've kind of done 20% of my progress. Um, when you finish, you are going to be able to go to the Career Exploration tab, which is here on the left. And based on your answers, it is going to score you. So there are lots, you can see, I'm going to scroll through here. There are lots of different career paths that are in this site. Okay, And so based on the answers, then it's going to give you your top choices at the top here. Okay, so it says the fit, my fit for this is 96%. For this one is 90%. For this one is 87%. And so then it kind of goes down. So these are, you know, 70%. It puts the ones based on your answers at the top. And then the least ones that are based on your answers at the bottom, obviously. Now, just because something is at the top doesn't mean that you have to go with that one. You can scroll down here and see, okay, actually architecture, it says 72%. I'm like, I love architecture and designing and stuff like that. 
Um, so you don't have to only look at ones that are at the top. You can look at any of the rest of them. But the great thing is with each one of these, you can watch an interview with a pro. So you can go on here. I clicked on architecture. I can watch an interview. I can hear some more um, answers to, hey, what's an architect about? It says score your fit. I actually can go back here. I can um, try an activity. So there's a little activity for me to get started on architecture. And I can go back and learn more. So here, this is kind of the learn more, watch the whole interview, start an activity. This tells you how much school that you will need to be an architect. Um, so at least a high school diploma, you could either get an associate's degree, which is the two-year degree, a bachelor's degree, which is a four-year degree, or an even higher degree, which is a doctoral. And then in each, so each area, it kind of lists this out the same. It gives an interview, it gives an activity, it gives how much school that you would need, and then it gives occupations found in this career. So um, I'm going to say, I'm going to just click on this one, actually landscape architects. I'm going to click on this. So for each job, if I'm interested and want to find out more about it, I can click on that job. And this one, it tells me I would need a bachelor's degree for this level. Um, wages. So normally when they put wages, they're saying how much you would earn per year. So this is $72,560 is the average wage for this um, landscape architect. Um, so you would divide that by 12 because there are 12 months in a year. This is actually way more money than I make because I get paid like a teacher. <laughs> so anyway, pretty good job. It also says the job growth. So this says moderate growth. So it means, you know, over the next few years, it's going to grow moderately. You know, it's not fast. It's not fast-paced growth. Um, if the answer here, it says fast growth, that means there's going to be a lot of jobs. Moderate growth means, yeah, there's going to be a few jobs, but, you know, it's not going to be, it's not the fastest growing job market, okay? Then it gives you... Um, job presence, some common task, and just tells you a little bit more about those career fields. So like I said, on the career exploration tab, you can just find out some more about each of the areas that you might be interested in. That's what you're supposed to do. Okay, so next, um, actually I'm going to skip to post-secondary education really quick. Um, this is where you can look up different colleges that have a the career that you're interested in. So like I can either check a four-year college, a two-year college, or a technical certificate. I can, if I know the name of the college, I can type it in here. If I just know the name of the program area, like architecture and related services, I can click here and then it's going to filter down. See, there's no two-year options, but there are some four-year options. So I just took two-year off. And then I can click on the different colleges. There's the NC State, and I can see a little bit more about NC State, how many students they have. It's a four-year institution, public, their programs that they offer, and just get a little bit more um, information about them. I can also view a tutorial about the post-secondary ex exploration. Okay, but the last thing that I want to go over today is this um, academic planning tab. I want everyone to do this, okay? So this is a plan, and I like I said, I have talked with the freshmen about this, but also the freshmen, sophomores, and juniors can be doing this. This is a plan. A plan is exactly that. Let me X out of this. So I'm just planning ahead, and this is actually going to help plan for registration. So registration starts in February and March, and that's where you sign up for classes for next year. Um, a lot of people just randomly pick what they want. So we want you to be more... Um, to think think more about, hey, what do you want to sign up for? Okay, so that's why we want you to go ahead and start thinking now. Um, now, typically, most of the time, your core classes are easier to pick. Like, if you're in Math 1 this year, you know you're going to pick Math 2 next year. If you're in Math 1 Honors this year, you know you're going to pick, uh, or most likely you're going to pick an Honors level next year. If you haven't taken any Honors yet and you are making at least an 85 or higher in your regular classes, then you might want to think about taking Honors or AP level. Okay, so this is what you do. Okay, so it should have your 7th, 
Now, mine, obviously, I haven't had 7th and 8th grade classes, but it should have your 7th and 8th grade courses already in here. Your ninth grade courses are not going to be in there yet unless you are a sophomore and a junior and a senior. Um, so the seniors can actually be planning for post-secondary after graduation, but everyone else needs to be academic planning for next year. So if you're in ninth grade, you need to put in what is your math class for now for each one. So you're going to click on the math and you're just going to pick over here. It should have just some choices for you to pick. If you needed to pick foundations of math one, if you were in that, you just click on it and it's going to pop it in there. Okay. You're also going to have, so found that you should have either foundations and math one. You're going to put earth and environmental. You're just going to click on whatever it is, whatever class that you're in either this semester or that you're planning to take next semester so that you can have all eight classes in here. Okay. So if I am, I'm just going to put world history for a freshman year. Okay. So then my plan, so you can see right here, I'm going to go ahead and plan for 10th grade. So I'm going to start I've already put in math one. I've already put in biology. I'm going to add social studies. So I'm going to add American history. Um, I'm going to add civics for 10th grade. If you're advanced, if you're kind of taking advanced classes, you um, probably want to do the civics for the 10th grade. For English, I'm going to add English two. So you get the gist. And then add general elective. So these are the things that you need to think about even more. What electives are you going to take? Okay, so we actually have um, a lot of CTE classes. Those are the main electives that you have, which are career and technical education. Those are like foods, carpentry, business, um, health science, um, metals, ag mechanics, horticulture, animal science. I'm only naming a few. Um, but I will... Um, also post in the Google Classroom. So this will be posted in the Google Classroom and I will also post a list of CTE classes. Um, we also have elective classes, R2C, um, PE, theater arts, visual arts, um, chorus. I know that I'm leaving something out. I'm just kind of giving a general overview. But this is what we want you to do to make your plan. Now, if you're a freshman, you can make your plan all the way through to senior year. This plan can change at any time. You can update this um, at any time. Um, so what we want you to do is go ahead and be thinking about registration for next year so that any mind changing that you're doing that you're going to do between now and when you really sign up for classes. This is not signing you up for classes. This is your plan for when the signing up for classes happens. Okay, this is because lots of people when they sign up, they pick something randomly and then they want to change their mind over the summer. And we've already got the sketch, the master schedule built. And it's not that easy. We have to say, well, no, you signed up for it. So you're going to have to keep it. This is your time for the next now. Let's see the rest of December, January and February until it gets to be registration time for you, for you to look through and change your mind to find out about the elective classes. OK, so I'm going to post some more links with this video in your Google Classroom for you to be looking at. I need everybody to be doing their academic plan. Like I said, you can go ahead and put which English you're going to take 10th grade, 11th grade and 12th grade. Um, or if you're a junior, you go ahead and plan. What are you going to do next year? OK. Um, your plan can change at any time. That's what a plan is, okay? Plans can be altered, but we want you to be working on your plan, and we want you to do this plan, and I need this academic planning done. I'm going to say just an outline, you know, just a general thing before we go home for Christmas, which is next Wednesday, okay? Um, I've told the freshmen that I need those done by Friday, but everybody, if we could just have the plan put in before we go home for Christmas, that would be phenomenal okay and if I will say I will do a treat for the homeroom the homeroom that has the most done in it um, the most plans completed um, at the by the time we go home for Christmas okay making videos is kind of hard sometimes mm -hmm. because you stumble over your words but anyway <laughs> if you have questions feel free to email me um, a to Sorbo, I'm going to put it on the screen, um, at harnet.k12.nc.us. Thanks for your time. Be working on this every homeroom. Okay? Have a great day.